bam, here I am. I got like a pimple or something on my forehead and it, uh, it's not a good look. Like I'm 12 again with like pimples from puberty or whatever. Uh, let's see. See, because I remember we, I remember we talked about this specifically. It was like land fear in disguise. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I definitely remember talking about the uh, the forsaken. I remember talking about uh, Leandrin and yeah. uh, Baron. Yeah, and Perrin. Jessica and Naomi. We talked about. Yes, and we did talk about Perrin. Okay. Yeah, because we talked about Dane Bornhold. Yeah, because Dane like uh, covered for him essentially from Valda, and then we talked a little bit about um, Avienda and the Aiel, like the fighting and all that. Yes. Yeah. I I think we're good. I think we're good to go. Yeah. Um. So I've got the girls and I've got Rand. I figure we'd save Rand for last. That sounds good. Yeah. So, picking up where four left off, uh, the girls got dunked on by Leandrin and put in the ways. <laughs> um, and then um, I looked up a couple, like, quote-unquote complaints from Facebook, and they are like, oh, oh, they have horses in the ways now? I thought that was a plot point of why they had to get rid of them in season one. And they're not wrong, but um, I chalk that up to Moraine not understanding the ways as well as she thought she did. Yeah. You can. But maybe do you think the horses would draw unwanted attention? Um, could be. I mean, Moraine could always you know. be like, Moraine could always be making uh, some kind of manipulative Aes Sedai play. Like, there's lots of ways to explain this kind of stuff away. Um, adding horses to it from a reality standpoint is probably just they didn't have the budget to make the set big enough for horses in season one. But in world, I mean, it could be anything. It could be Moraine not being as familiar with the ways as she let on, or Leandra knows more, or whatever. Whatever, however you want to uh, frame it, it's plausible. Um, and it makes sense that Leandrin knows more about the ways than Moraine does since Leandrin is uh black Aja and has access to more resources and knowledge. Yeah. So no. now the, the monsters in the ways, do they serve the dark or do they serve no one? The monsters? Um, there's Trollocs in the ways because they're traveling from point A to point B and then there's the black wind, but other than that, there's no. I don't think there's monsters in the ways. Okay. The black wind. Um, Masha, is that... Masha Dar is like um, so. is um, is kind of like the corruption of Shadar Logoth. You know, the Machin Shin. Well, I'm yeah. getting the names mixed up. I'll make a short out of that and get myself roasted. Uh, Machin Shin is in the ways and Mashadar is in Shadar Logoth and they're both basically like evil like manifestations of evil and hatred and it doesn't serve the dark like it'll the black wind in the ways will eat Trollocs just as quickly as it'll eat regular people so I was just thinking to the point that Leandrin wouldn't be afraid to bring horses in because she doesn't have anything to fear in the ways versus Moraine traveling with the kids. You know, she's borderline paranoid at yeah. any external threat. Oh, yeah. that's. I mean, that's a good point, too. But the Black Wind will uh, screw up Leandrin just as, just as fast. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, at least... At least in the, the literature. 
you know, they may, they may change the mechanics a little bit for the show. It's an interesting concept because it would change some of the events that the ways are um, used a little bit throughout the series of books. So it'd be interesting to change the way the Black Wind works and add a twist, um, kind of limit limit what the the good guys can do if they're if the ways serve the the forces of evil i guess Mm -hmm. a little a little more strongly it'd be an interesting take on it Uh, lots of people would be upset about that and i'm okay with that sounds like they're already upset yeah they're not gonna get any more upset (laughs) i uh i'm in i'm in the facebook group for will of time and the cosmere and it's mostly just Mostly just people ranting. Anytime somebody posts like, oh, I just started this book. I love it. People are like, just wait until you get to book four. Why didn't you read it 15 years ago, you piece of shit? You're not a true uh, fan. Yeah, Rhythm of War came out in 2019 or whatever. How come you didn't read it in 2015? You, you're dog shit. <laughs> that's, that's why I don't join those i would like to see what other people think and and see some some unique takes but i think i would just frustrate myself yeah. watching people be so toxic i'm a top contributor in those facebook groups i fucking bet you are out there doing the lord's work behind enemy lines i am i put i made a post today because uh on that game everquest um uh, well, I guess I need to back up. In Brandon Sanderson's world, there is an evil persona named Odium, and I won't go into any more detail because um, it's a spoiler. But Odium is an evil dude, and uh, in EverQuest today, before you texted me, I was playing, and one of the spells one of my characters has is named Odium, and I was like, huh. That's an odd coincidence. And then I looked up the the details and it that spell and the creature that it's named for all got released in 2010 right before Sanderson started uh writing those or releasing those books. Mm-hmm. And I was like, interesting. Like the the overlap of two things that I love, I never thought that that would be I never thought that that would happen. And now I'm wondering if uh, Brandon played EverQuest at some point. Maybe so. Or alternatively, somebody that that works for EverQuest reads Brandon Sanderson's work and decided to do a tribute in the game. Both are possible. Um, Either way, it's a coincidence that you like. Yeah, dude. I I was stoked. I love it. Um So I do have like I kind of I kind of talked about like in season 1 when they were talking about um when they were talking about shielding Loghain, it took three three sisters or two sisters of a very high power to shield Loghain. Okay, that's that's fine. Um, but in this scene, Leandrin is not... I don't think she's that much stronger than the three of these people combined. So I'm wondering... I'm wondering what the... I guess Nynaeve is the only one awake until they get captured by the Shan Chan? Is that, is that the logic that we're trying to follow here? I, th- I think so. I, okay. It kind of threw me for a little bit of a loop too when I saw that. Okay. But I just rolled with it. Yeah, I'm I'm gonna roll with. I'm trying to defend the thought process, but in general, like, if you're gonna say that it's that hard to shield Loghain and Loghain is amazed by Nynaeve's power, then Leandrin shouldn't even be able to attempt to shield her. But, True. you know, Nynaeve can't access Nynaeve. the one power unless she's mad. Exactly. And the, the other two girls appear to be taking a nap the whole trip. So, yeah. um, sleepy time for the win. Um, yeah. So, this is like uh, Lady Suroth is 
walking up onto the way the ways uh portal or gate or whatever and uh i don't know if they name these people maybe i think they name them when uh when loyal and inktar become one but these are daco vale they're essentially like like property um which i don't i don't know if you knew that or not if they explain no. i don't know if they explained it well um, I mean, maybe they do later on in the season uh, when Loyal and, and uh, Inktar Ink Tar get more screen time, but that's not something I've got to yet. I've only really seen them in the background of this episode uh, in their new position. Right. Um, you know, because Ink Tar's homies are, are looking out for them, uh, aka the Dark Friends. Right. Well, purely, uh, purely in the interest of book accuracy, these white dresses are technically supposed to be translucent. So. Yeah. I mean, hey, we're, we're all for book accuracy, but I think they'd have to uh, switch this over to HBO if they, uh, I, they wanted to go book accurate. I mean, if you're, if you're going to make the show, maybe you should put in, this is, this is, this is my deal breaker. If they don't get these Daco Ville right real soon, I'm going to stop watching. You know what? If you're gonna do it, don't half ass it. All right. That's right. Whole ass it. Don't don't half ass it. Mm -mm. Uh, anyways, I uh, I really they don't describe this in the books, but I really really like this uh, blue face paint concept. Mm -hmm. Like, there's something about it. Um, I'm still mad that there's no lightning bolts on. Uh, on their uniform, but I really do like the, I dig the face paint. It's, uh, and if you notice... A little SS like. Yeah, and if you see the, um, well, yeah, I get that. Um, but if you see them when their face paint is off, they have, like, a bunch of scarring on their face. I thought mm -hmm. that was cool, too. Yes. Um. Anyways... Uh, so like Leandrin and Suroth get in an argument, by the way, most of that argument is like pulled right out of the book, like the threats back and forth to each other. Uh, oh shoot. I forgot to pull your notes up. I don't even know if yeah, I like, I like that little confrontation. To be honest, I don't really think I have much on the girls here. Um, oh, okay. And Rand in this episode, I think we pretty much covered all my notes in the last episode we did. Okay, well, this screenshot is in your notes. Leandrin helps Nynaeve escape. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, once again, my screenshot taking is on point. Or your note taking yes, is, is on point, one or the other. I, I just like to think that we're both locked in, you know? I, I think so. I mean, that's... Let's, that's give, let's give both of ourselves a pat on the back here. I will. I will. Um, so... Leandrin basically unshields and then cuts the bonds of the three the three sleepy chicks after her confrontation with Suroth. It doesn't that part doesn't quite happen that way, but I did like that they put Suroth and Leandrin's argument in there almost verbatim. Like the threats of like our master will see you uh serve the Aes Sedai and then Suroth is like our master will see you all collared like in the books it had a very specific purpose and i think in the show they did it uh for the same reason is to show that like um like the position of the the dark friends are competing with each other like they're mm -hmm. not they're not working together they're competing with each other yeah that came a kind of came across as okay. a bit of a shock to me whenever i saw that it, it definitely pointed that out to me that this was a competition between them and yeah. and even so it kind of followed up a little bit later with you know the um the forsaken and how they compete and there's more infighting between them than there is them working together um, right I, yeah i did enjoy that i i hope these two girls go to war if I if I had to pick a theme for this episode, I would say that that's probably the theme they were going for is to demonstrate that the the dark friends as a whole all have their own ambitions because we saw Suroth uh, at the beginning of the episode get her nails chopped off 
and then get mad at Ishamayo, basically saying, you need my armies. And then this scene, Leandrin and Suroth go at it. And then, you know, like the, I think there's one more example somewhere. I'd we'll have to see, but you know what I mean? Like it feels, it feels like, uh, this is a, a pretty good theme for this episode. I'd agree. Um, so I think the, the budget was significantly better for special effects because this is pretty close to what I imagine um, restraining someone with air would look like. Mm-hmm. And uh, I really enjoy it. Also, I think you mentioned it, but like the, whenever the, the uh, Damani used channeling, like you see like the, the strands at their, at their wrist kind of look like shackles. I think that's cool. Yeah. It's a really cool visual effect. That's why I like being able to see the one power. Like I know you kind of talked about how it's not a a visual that you get in the book, Yeah. uh, but I enjoy that. Well, I mean, technically we don't get any visuals in the book. It's all words. So yeah, but you said it was invisible. Yeah. You know, I, I'm for this description. I think my only real beef is that when they show someone on camera seeing something they shouldn't be able to see. Like, if Egwene's eyes were open, she should be able to see these weaves. But if, like, a normal dude was just standing off in the corner, he wouldn't be able to see this. He would just see Egwene tied up with nothing. If that makes sense. So, you know... I think that would be cool if they ever showed that. Like, if they just showed a random dude, like, watching it happen, they'd be like, what? That must be the one power. Uh, I'm going to nope out of here. See you later. <laughs> Pretty much. Um, Nynaeve and Elaine escape. And uh, I'm not I'm not mad, but... Um, and I think they showed it a little bit. Didn't Nynaeve, like screw up some of these the Sean Chan pretty bad on their way out I can't remember or did they just run away I feel like they just ran away in in the midst of uh, the Sean Chan blasting them um, that's how they kind of like separated Egwene from the group that way because okay. uh, Nynaeve is still in the process of not being able to use her one power I mean maybe Elaine uh, did something Right. Well, but that's not something that I remember. I, don't, I really don't think any of them did did much. That's fine. In the in the in the I mean, when you get to it in the books, Nynaeve gets like super pissed that they're at the betrayal of Leandrin and like as they're running away, she's like they cut to a scene where the where Suroth and one of her captains is standing there, and you just like it's described as like. Uh, like half the forest is on fire and there's lightning coming down everywhere. And then it cuts back to Nynaeve and she's like trying to get away and she's pissed. So, you know, it it would have been a good visual, but not necessary. It's just like one of those scenes that people look forward to, but you know, it's fine. Um, so Nynaeve and Elaine are, uh, going through the city and I think Elaine right here is um, like trying to take charge and Nynaeve's not having it yeah it uh, is funny watching them go back and forth it's it's uh, pretty close to what happens um, like the relationship in the book it's always tense between uh, Nynaeve and anybody and Elaine is one of the few people that's like look bitch <laughs> like you're arguing with the with the heir of Andor. I know how to deal with people like you. Yeah. But uh I I like it. It's anytime they show Elaine kind of uh being royal is uh is nice. Um fun fact about this chick from the Yellow Aja, she is in the books. Um she is already captured, so this is yeah. like this is a minor change, but I thought it was um, I thought it was a good use 
of uh, showing how difficult it is to make any progress against the Shan Chan because they are brutal. Um, what is this? Took this screenshot, but I don't remember why. That is Egwene getting collared. Oh, that's right. They had her shielded, but they put the collar on her later, right? Yeah, they brought her in with some yeah. like thing draped over her head <clears throat> as like a gift to the like their lord. What is his name? Turok. Turok. Yeah. Um. Oh, and one of my uh, my caption for this was this little collar was all we really needed. We didn't need like the big shoulder thing, you know. But that was like a comment to myself. Just. That's how I get. Yeah. It's my therapy. That's that's fair. I I like the whole shoulder thing because I think it uh it vi it does a really good job visually demonstrating the yeah domination of them much yeah. more than just like a necklace in a way you know. I I agree, and I think for TV it's probably the right call. Um, in the in the books, it's kind of uh, coached. From like the perspective of the Aes Sedai or channelers need to be aware of uh, anybody with a silver collar on and them including the big shoulder contraption um, if they keep it in the book is going to cause or if they keep a certain set of scenes from in the book and put it in the show it's going to cause problems so this simple easily disguisable necklace is um is uh Im important i guess is the best way to put it so them adding all the extra decoration is cool it's visually it's good for the tv show it could cause a plot problem later on uh which will be a part of my predictions when we get to the end of this thing uh because i i'm gonna cut basically a half a book out just from this scene right here um what did i oh i put got him as a title for this because <laughs> she's she's stuck for sure now yeah she is dude um and you can see like this must have been like right at the end of her scene too because she's she's like i tried to capture like the horror of what's going through her head at the moment. And I think I, mm -hmm. I think I grabbed it. Okay. Um, the next episode is when she's not having a good time at all. Yeah, this is, uh, this is the start of her come up right here, dog. She, uh, she goes through the damn thing. Yeah. She's not having a good time. Uh, and that's it for the, the girls arc. We kind of picked that up next episode. Okay. Um, but that was all I had for them. Let me get through Perrin real quick so I can get to Rand. Okay. Uh, last episode, I think that's when Moraine kills or slices and dices uh land fear up and now moraine and rand are on the run yeah sounds about right um i do want to appreciate that the show made this as brutal as this they probably were allowed to like the big gash on her throat and the blood everywhere and uh, yeah this <laughs> yeah it's good. Um, Cause I think you can see her like heart beating and it's like pushing blood out of her neck in this scene. Sick. Yeah, it was pretty riveting. Uh, I, I enjoyed it all the way through the, the chase scene where she goes and uh, I mean, and, and also along that chase, you know, shows her brutality. You know, when that guy comes up and he's like, oh, miss, like, are you okay? And she's like, oh, I fucking am now. Yeah, I got it. Appreciate a, you bringing me a horse. 
Let's, uh, I, I tried to capture all those moments, so I got a slide for that one. <laughs> um, this is, um, I'm not sure, they haven't talked about it, but this is a, a separate power that's being shown right here with the, the black flecks across the eye. The visual is stunning. The, vi the visual is done really well. <laughs> not accurate, but it looks cool. It looks cool. Um, I, I'm, what I'm hoping is, is that they either correct or add to this because I always wanted to see this exact mechanic the way it's portrayed in the books. So in the books, like if you're looking at the screen right now, what should be happening is like a speck of like this dark material traveling from one eye um, across in a straight line uh, and then timed correctly so that like if it was going at a constant speed, it would travel across the other eye shortly after, which is creepy as shit when you read about it. So I hope they add that in there at some point, not to correct this, but maybe to add it as like a separate thing. Mm -hmm. uh, Cause it would be cool. Um, like we're not supposed to see this if this is what I think it is this soon, but it's okay. They're, they're, um, I was trying to figure out what, what this next scene was. Like I tried to, I think I captured it all right, but it's like darkness, like grasping and like reaching out to her kind of, to me, it looks like that black shit that Matt has to deal with, um, from Shadow Logoth. That's what it looks like to me. Yeah, it's similar. Um, I have no idea. I, I don't. This is totally different, so I have no, no, um, no context. Um. Anyways, uh, moving on. I think Moraine's trying to escape, and she pulls out her ring. Is, is that I'm pretty sure this is where she's like trying to get the horses and she intimidates the stable woman yes okay yes. yeah I, I took a screenshot of the ring because I um I, I thought it was interesting that she's you know in her mind she's still in Aes Sedai whether she can use the power or not so I thought that was cool um and then uh Lanfear's doesn't have a horse, and this is the scene you were talking about. She just uh, flicks her fingers and uh, <laughs> takes this guy's head off like a watermelon. Starts him into the uh, headless horseman. I like to imagine yeah. that the mechanic she visualizes is uh, the rubber band thing where you put too many rubber bands on a watermelon. <laughs> yeah. And, and that's how she did it. So... Um, Moving on, we cut back to Moraine, and she's, you did not defeat the Dark One at the Eye of the World. True. Um, but I, I don't Is think that, that the it's... the strongest lieutenant free? Yeah, I don't think that's mentioned until, like, right now. I think they kind of hint at it, but they, um, but they, this is, like, the first spot where they come right out and say it. Um, yeah. And then I can't remember the context of this. Usually just looking at the screenshot gives me some kind of hint. This doesn't I can't remember why she yeah. was saying this. I couldn't either. It's uh it's definitely when they were having a conversation Right. About him unleashing Oh, is it him not wanting to use the power? No. Gosh. Why am I struggling with this? It's a, I mean, it's just a blip of a scene in, yeah. a, in a pretty long show. Uh, I wouldn't feel too bad about it. I. So I know I'm mixing up uh, this scene with a scene from the book that follows the same line of reasoning but with uh rand 
saying he's not going to use the power. He doesn't want to use it. And they basically tell him the same like phrase. We have no we have no hope of winning the last battle if you're not going to try to learn. Like you have to learn how to use it. That's why I thought that's what this was. Um, yeah, I don't ever remember him telling her in the show, I'm not using the power. I, I remember other people around him hinting that he's afraid of it, that he's not embracing it. But I don't feel like at this point in the show, I ever heard Rand tell Moraine, I'm not using this one power. I, I also think I'm confusing a scene of Rand and the Omerlin later on. Because I think that that also happens. Okay. So I have no idea what this. I don't have any context for this. But anyways, um, this this whole episode of Landfear kind of uh, being a terrifying woman is uh, great. Like she's graceful, elegant, nonchalant, and uh, absolutely horrifying. She is a straight up savage, hundred yeah. percent. Because, and I love it. And I'm kind of upset at Moraine for leaving her as bait. Because uh, who wants to get matrixed? Uh, yeah, well, I mean, she wasn't supposed to stop. You know, that's kind of her fault. Was she not supposed to? St I don't remember. No, she said she said that she was supposed to uh, not stop until she made it to the town. Oh. But because she takes care of the horses, she was like, you know, I care about these creatures. They needed to stop and rest. Yeah. Hmm. And then she spilled all the beans, which I think is the only reason she gets to keep her life. And then uh, gets her mouth zip shut. I don't know if she gets to keep her life. Um, like, I don't know what... Uh... I don't know what Lanfear did to do this, but there's no like specific thing with the one power that she could have done to accomplish this. So she might be screwed no matter what. Uh, I'm was, sure we'll never know. Uh, no, I doubt it. Um, hmm. Oh, this is where they're talking about sleeping. Yeah. And I took it before I finished the scene. Because, um, she, like, I, my screenshot literally said, why is sleeping bad? And then she says it in the next, like, cutscene. Um, Lanfear is good in the world of dreams, or Teleon Riod, however you want to pronounce it. Um, is this... Like, do you know anything about how I, what she's talking about here at this point? I mean, the conversations that we've had, we've we've had yeah. a couple conversations about the dream world, but yeah, like, no, I haven't been in the book where they explain it in depth, right? Other than what you've told me. Okay. Um. Big skip. What the hell does that mean? Oh. She's being nice to her nephew. Yeah. Barthanis, right? Mm-hmm. I like I like Barthanis. Um and then I'm just trying to get I mean, at, at some point, Rand decides to go to sleep. I don't remember exactly what the context was, but I think Moraine decides to, uh, like, let him sleep so that they can uh, confront Lanfear or get some information from her. Is that right? Yeah, they wanted they wanted a player, so yeah, they they're talking about it, and she's trying to gather information about what Lanfear wants, or maybe what has Lanfear. Mm -hmm showed Rand and Rand's basically like other than like you showing up and slicing her throat it's been pretty much me and her just falling in love like I think he kind of I don't remember the exact phrase that he used but he was like I think of everything that was between us not all of it was not true right trying to hint at like there was something there on a deeper level that you know they did connect with each other for both of them and he says that for both of us 
and Moraine's like, okay, well, like, let's try to use this to our, our advantage here. And, like, you go confront her and, and just kind of play, like, you know, the dumb boyfriend that's confused and doesn't know what's going on and, and you know, see if you can get something out of this. Right. Um... Yeah, I think that's I think that's exactly what happens. Uh I don't I don't remember. I trust you. But also Rand sure. finds out from Moraine who Lanfear really is as well and her right. connection to him in his past life. Oh, so he gets like some background before before he dives in. Yeah, that's where this right here. This uh subtitle yeah. before he met his wife. Yeah. So I think Rand is kind of taken aback like cuz he has genuine feelings for her. Right. In some capacity, she has it for him. Now he's hearing that they were actually really a thing, and he's the one, maybe not he himself, but his previous life is what led her down this path, and I feel like he feels a bit of... a bit of responsibility for that, because that's how Rand is. Rand never wants to hurt anybody, and he doesn't want his powers to corrupt them or put them on a bad path, and I think that her ending up Lanfear ending up the way that she is, he feels a bit of responsibility for that. So when he goes in, you know, I think he is on the right side with Moraine, but there's also a part of him that's like, you know, I, I have to fix this. This is a, this is a Rand problem. And the, that's why he has this conversation with her. And I think when he gets out of the dream, he doesn't tell Moraine shit. Right. I think you're 100% right. I think in episode six, um, he does exactly what you're saying. I think he gets out and like basically says, uh, all right, see you later. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so Rand falls asleep and then uh, he's uh, half naked shortly yeah, after. Yeah, boy, that. did she pounce on him? She uh, got him. And uh, I thought that was, I thought that was great. And then, then they cut to Lanfear, and oh boy! Well, there I, you go. Uh, next episode. Take it, take it away, Mike. Next episode awakens things inside of me. <laughs> um, I won't be sharing that episode with the family that likes to watch my streams. Uh, and that's and that's it for I think this is pretty much where the where the episode ends. With the yeah, land fear and her get up sets a uh, sets a lot of juicy shit up. Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm excited to talk about it. Um, I don't know. So that's a that's the end of episode five, and I'm really. I'm really excited because like the six, seven, and eight, like as a whole, feel like the. You know, I'm a little, a little salty about episode eight, but it's hard to do season endings. Period, and I thought they did an okay job. Uh, but six and seven, at least what I took, like I enjoyed those two episodes tremendously. Like I enjoyed them a bunch. It was good. So. I have a, a few people, I would say probably more than a few, I have quite a few people in my personal life that watch this show that have never read the books. Mm -hmm. And they thought season two was fantastic, especially the second half of the season, the way yeah. that it ended. So apart from the book, apart from anybody having like pre-recollections of what's going to happen or ties to the book and wanting to see that just somatics right like on its on its surface yeah visually it was done great and also the storyline right was terrific right yeah, don't I, know how accurate it was but oh, I, I thought I'm, that it was really well done i mean at at, the, at this point at this point um like even in those Facebook groups, I uh, get on there and I'm like, well, "You're just, you're just hating on it because, you know, they're never gonna make another attempt while you're alive." So 
you're just mad that you're going to be dead if they ever decide to do it right. So just enjoy so. it. <laughs> yeah. Just, just enjoy That's it. While, just enjoy it the way you can. Like, yeah, appreciate appreciate it for what it is. And I mean, they're going to do their goal is to do eight seasons. 14 books man like i mean there's gonna be some mix and mash there's gonna be some things thrown around in eight seasons there's no way that they can cover 14 full books of material i wouldn't want them to there's yeah. there's scenes in the books that that you know if they ever did like a ultra super extended mega cut you know the a la dan snyder's dc universe maybe but uh, a, lo a lot of the scenes in the books have no business being in a visual format. So, <laughs> you know. Um, but, you know, that's, it's all up to the, it's all up to whoever, I guess Rafe. Rafe is the one ultimately making the decision on what gets to be put on screen. So, I'm, I'm happy, f I'm happy for where we're at right now. I, uh, I'm probably going to want to do a separate episode where I kind of, uh, give some Spit back, on it. well, I'll give some background on to how, uh, book two ended. I mean, but it'll be purely just so I can get it out there. And then whenever we talk oh. about the, whenever we talk about season three predictions, I'll have to give some background on uh, some book spoilery stuff. So I don't know if you actually want to participate on that, but uh, I'm probably going to be... I can try to keep it generic enough so that you can't really piece anything together, but unfortunately you are you kind of have a good read on on my body language and how I talk, so it's a risk. <laughs> I can try. Yeah, I might I might just dip out. Uh we'll see. I've got some stuff to talk about here, wrap up the last few minutes. But uh one I've actually spoiled something for myself last night. Uh, What's that? I'm pissed about. Um no, no, no. I know what Egwene ends up being. You do? So how the hell did you spoil happened? that? I Dog. I just clicked on I clicked on an article talking about the show. Oh my god. And they they just like fucking no warning no nothing just slid that bitch right in there fuck man and so if you're watching this and don't. you don't know the story stop the stream stop it because i'm about to spoil five three yeah two, five yeah one one <laughs> Egwene becomes the armor seat spoiled yeah i'm pretty fucking pissed I can't believe, uh, man, I would just <laughs> avoid articles. That's one of the bigger, yeah, well, it's one of the bigger spoilers. Yeah, dude. Like, I mean, it, it had no warning. It was talking about the show. The, the title of the article was about the show. I click on it, um, cause it was talking about setup for like season three. Right. Kind of like how they left off and some things that they did in the show that were a little different than the book. And so I was thinking, you know, okay, I might see a detail here or there that's like in the book of book three, but not not like a, a, a pinnacle spoiler or something. Not this, this great thing. Like third bulletin point. It was like this messes up Egwene's path to the Omerlin scene. I was like, oh, God. So I, I exited out of it. I didn't read anymore. But, uh... <laughs> Dude, I'm pissed. Um, I'm sorry, pissed. dude. That's uh, that's crushing. I have uh, to to had be... a lot of self control and not spoiled anything in this book. I've got my hunches, my hot takes yeah. about certain people. I refuse to Google anything, and for that to be thrown in with no spoiler warnings, that is a uh, that's a, I mean that's a, a crime. That's a crime for whoever wrote that article. Shame on them. Like whenever, even when we talk about like predictions for season three, I say that I'm going to spoil stuff, but honestly, I'm, I'm going to be, try to be as generic and bland as possible. Just, just because I know that like, I know that people are going to watch this and I like, as far as like major spoilers go, I don't think I've really given anything away on stream. I think you and I have kind of talked about a few things. 
Um, yeah. maybe, maybe I've spoiled a couple book things, but I don't think I've given away hardly anything. Like we don't, I don't think I've given away anything about the dark friends. I've kind of like pointed you in, pointed out things to you that I saw on the show and you kind of pieced yeah. together things on your own. But, um, like, you know, uh, who, who becomes, you know, overwhelming authority figure for what group is definitely not on the menu. Like I don't, I don't hint at it. It's not, uh, it's not enjoyable for me to spoil stuff like that. Mm. Um, so it's not, it's not fun to know it either. Like I, right. I just, I feel disgusted that yeah. I know that now. Yeah. I mean, to be fair, when you read the book, um, men predicted it. So it's one of her visions when they're at the really? in the first book she yeah, says that yeah like the chapter where they meet men for the first time she talks about uh one she says one of them is holding a white flame it's the flame oh. of the flame of tarvalin okay yeah. little little vague there i well, like it her visions are are intentionally vague because she doesn't know what they yeah. mean yeah um okay so like all all of her visions come true. So yeah. like anytime you see men on screen in the book and she's talking about what she sees, I would uh, at least jot it down for a future yeah. reference. Um, so Rand 100% dies at the end of this, or at least at some point. She's just describing the vision. I can't, I mean, I can't uh, go into it. Yeah. Okay. I just remember her saying three beautiful women around his grave or something like that yep. or at his funeral yep i love that one okay 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 so but i don't want to spoil anything else i'm, a, I'm nah, stuck about it's that not one. yeah it's not a i mean it is a spoiler but they technically tell you in book one so okay well i feel better about knowing her being the omelette seat now than yeah it reminded me that men said that so yeah it's just okay. a, just to take the edge off bro i don't want you to feel too that. upset about it yeah, I was about to give up on this whole series. I was about to just <laughs> be done with it. Spoilers for you, no, Docoville for me. I'm uh, I'm chugging along in in the book. Yeah, I'm getting there. We're well, getting towards the end of book one. Where are you at um, currently? So the last thing that I read was Egwene. No, not Egwene. Nynaeve, mm -hmm. Lan, and Moraine just saved Perrin and Egwene from the White Cloaks. Right. Yep. And so uh, if I remember correctly, like the first chapter is Nynaeve sneak it in to kind of get the horses set up to be free. Yes. Uh, before Moraine wreaks lightning down on them. And then the next chapter is from Perrin's perspective, I believe, with him and Egwene in the camp. Uh huh. With Child Byar, I believe. Yes. Yeah. And so that's kind of where I left off. So I'm, I'm chapter 40. I got about eight hours left, um, Oof. so I should be able to to pump through that like 25 hours in, or 24 or something like that. So sick. We're getting there. We're chugging along. Congratulations, man. I mean the the book yeah. is the book is a a thick boy. Like I I routinely read these books and I mostly have it on in the background for background noise. I'm not I'm not usually actively listening. But like to actively listen for 25, 30 hours is, uh, is draining for sure. It's a lot. Well, I want to be able to comprehend it enough that I can talk about it. Now, in no way am I going to be able to remember all the details and, and nah. flesh it out with you. But you have the shape um, of it. Yeah, I, I have a general grasp of what's going on. I, I start to see things that you have pointed out when we watched season one that you were talking about. It's a little different. Like, you know, the boy is showing up to Camelin, uh mm -hmm. instead of Tarvalon. Them meeting the the innkeeper who was friends with Tom. And it was pretty cool to kind of hear uh, the barkeep or the innkeeper kind of talk about, you know, Tom and, and his past and kind of refusing to believe that Tom's dead. And hinting at his previous life, which the boys have no idea about. Right. Um, 
That's what I was going to ask uh, you if if you liked uh, if you liked the innkeeper's comment about uh, if if you didn't see his body, I don't believe he's dead <laughs> or something like that. Yeah, <laughs> I think he said he was like, "I'll believe Tom's dead when I see his body." Yeah, it's comforting, right? Feels yeah, just a yeah, little it gave me hope, right? Not but, not uh, technically a spoiler. Just I mean, we don't know because you're not. No, you we don't we don't uh, get any confirmation. But hearing it from the barkeep, somebody that knows Tom well, is uh, always nice to hear. Yeah, it just gave a little uh, backstory to like him and, and being in the high courts, which kind of explains why Tom's mm-hmm. so good in those kind of high pressure situations and dealing with people, and sometimes why he's a little not good mm-hmm. with people. Um, you know, and talks a, a bit about his nephew, and that's probably why he has the connection to the two boys um, right. because of what happened with his nephew right um yeah i'm curious to find more information out you know i'm, I'm ready for him to come back and, and maybe share a little bit about his past uh especially with some of the conversations me and you have had in regards to uh him tom i mean having the familiarity with the ailman i think is going to be right interessante yeah, um, so. I'm not sure. I mean, Tom has familiarity with the Aiel in the books in a passing sense. I don't, I don't know that. Uh, I don't know that they ever interact directly like they do in the show. Um, but yeah. I mean, it's. I don't really think that's a spoiler either. Um, where you're at in the book, they just met the innkeeper. Or... No, it was like, I mean, at this point, it was like three chapters ago. Because the most recent two chapters were Parent's Perspective uh-huh. with Egwene and Nynaeve's Perspective. Um, the chapter I'm on right now is the Web Titans. Right. Um, haven't oh, started that one yet. Okay. But Ran, where I left off, Ran, uh, they were they were looking at L- Loghain being marched through Camelot. Okay. Has Rand right, yeah, so has Rand been to the library in the inn? Yeah, he already met Loyal. Okay. So you yeah. see what you so see he what went I, to the inn. You see what I mean about like spoiler conversation? It, it would be really hard for me to ask like, have you met, like, have you run into Loyal yet? Because then you'd be like, what the fuck? No, I haven't. Thanks a lot. <laughs> yeah, no. No. Yeah. He he went to the inn. They talked with the, the innkeeper. Matt's being a cuck. A hundred percent per you per use. Um, and so ran kind of chills in the, in the tavern for a bit. And then I think he kind of gets bored. He, he's kind of hearing about, you know, like keeping his mouth shut, realizing that like, you know, he's got a friend in the end, but you know, being a friend of Tom's or, you know, just coming from where he did, it's probably best to just shut up while you're in town, you know, keep your head down. Right. So he goes and, and tries to read up, and that's where he meets Loyal. And yeah, he is described much differently than, not much differently, but he is a, a bit different in the book than he is in the show. Yeah, they in they mis- size they mistake stuff, him you know? they mistake him for a trollic all the time. Yeah. Which is so, you know I mean it, they have to do what they have to do. I so, I did see some comments on uh, Facebook talking about why well, I wish they would have. Uh, I wish they would have done forced perspective like they did with Hagrid and Harry Potter. And I was like, that's not a bad point. That's a, a good point, actually. Yeah, um, I wish they would have done that, too. I think that I think that would have been pretty cool. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to find the chapter you're on. Let's see. You said chapter the, 40. The, the Web Titans. Mm-hmm. Okay, so that means... So the in- I was trying to find the innkeeper's name. Master Gill, I think is his name. Yeah. yeah. He's a favorite. A lot of people like him. Yeah, I, I liked him too. I mean, I haven't got too much about him. I think... Uh, I think uh, Ran is still a bit sussy about everybody, and rightly so. I mean for like eight fucking chapters they've just been running for their life from everybody so I don't blame them 
but uh, I do like the guy. Uh, we we run into him later, so okay. Like no, okay. nothing nothing fishy or anything like that. It's just not, nothing happens to him. So yeah, it's just we like Camelin is uh, visited more than once. Okay. Uh, I love I love the city of Camelin. I hope they do a good job in season three of showing it because it's uh, if they decide to keep using that that scene, it's uh, a good a good place for stuff to happen. I enjoy it. Shall see. They got a lot of places to cover. The wasteland. Yeah, they do. The Aiel waste yeah. should be pretty easy since it's all freaking dirt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think you said they were we in Africa see. or something like that. Yeah, they said that they had uh, finished up filming in, in South Africa. But, you know, as of today, uh, you know, I'm done looking at any fucking stories in regard to Will of Time. Well, if you see an article and you want me to skim it, I'll skim it for you and, and give you the yeah. give you like an edited version. And that and that makes me mad because I that thought crossed my mind before I, I clicked on it. I was Damn. like, ah, I should send this to, to Mike to skim through, see what he thinks. Yeah, I would have given you like a like, big giant like do not read. Yeah. <laughs> don't need that. <laughs> the, the, your brain. Don't even remember that that article existed. That sucks, man. I'm so disappointed in whoever yeah. wrote that and posted it. You know, there's me there's, too, man. I'm those Facebook, what is it now, those three, four years that I have not spoiled this for myself yet. Yeah, it sucks because like one of the one of the reasons why I don't want to, I I didn't really like. It's not like a true reason for not streaming on YouTube directly. But seriously, if we tried to do that and we got a bunch of people in the chat, somebody would spoil that shit deliberately. I'd have to like moderate yeah. the comments heavily. I'd have to keep an eye on it almost the whole time. I would, uh, or you just get somebody that's a, a real stud muffin that, that likes our conversation and, and you give them uh, some executive power. And if they see any spoils, they, they uh, shut that down and you get a, uh, an instant block. Yeah, yeah, I get that, um, but I, uh, I don't know. I don't, I have a hard time trusting people to, to be good at that kind of stuff. Like That's I'm true. You I'm, know? I'm pretty cautious about what I talk to you about and what I say. I just, I'm worried that somebody would think that, oh, that's not a spoiler. And then it gets through and you're like, oh, what the, f you know? Yeah, I mean, I, I can't be too mad either. I mean, this book's been out for a long time, you know, and uh, it, it is what it is. It's like spoiling Top Gun. Like, dog, the movie came out 20 years ago. I'm going to talk about it. Right. But, no, it, do, it does suck. I've done a really good job, Anna and me both, of not ruining the story. And, you know, like we get curious, we have conversations, we want to know the answer, we want to know if we're right or if we're on the right track, but you know, you just uh, hold yourself back. And uh, yeah, what a bummer. But it is what it is. Good for her. I'm happy. And uh, I guess the exciting part now is the, uh, is the journey, not the destination, Mike. Alright. So, Cosmere reference. Excellent. I like it. It'll be fun to jump into episode six. Heck yeah. I, uh, I mean, I'm excited for it too. I, uh, I think, I think this stream is done. we we'll call it a wrap. Yeah. Sounds like a, sounds like a move. As you said, you had about an hour and we're at a, a little over an hour. So, uh, Victor, I think, I think the next episode is going to be a two-parter as well. There's oh, I think a lot. I think every episode going forward is going to be. I think season one were uh, shorter episodes just because we were trying to get our feet wet and figure out what to talk about, and we already knew season two was out. You know, I think yeah. I think the next uh, the last the last three are all going to be two parters for sure sounds like a plan so uh i had 35 mile an hour winds today and 
my whole body is covered in sand. So I'm gonna go take a shower. As as you should. I commend you for uh, for streaming and still taking a shower. <laughs> the same day. I don't know, man. It's it seems like uh, you know I've been streaming for. I guess this is going on three months now, and every time I walk by the soda aisle, Mountain Dew just catches my eye. I don't know what it is about it. Mountain Dew, frozen pizza, and uh, and I haven't bought any soap in a while, so I think uh, you are uh, you are turning into that uh, stereotypical streamer. <laughs> Is powered by fucking hot pockets and Mountain Dew, right? I, oh man, and be... doesn't shower. Gets on. He's got greasy hair, pimples right in the middle of his forehead. Yeah, thanks. I'm sorry. <laughs> Appreciate that. Yeah, I could, I could let you get out with that. It's a good, good thing I got this upgraded camera, right? Yeah. Yeah. Get it in high def. But yeah. All right, man. Well, uh, right, man, I'm, well, let me know about uh, tomorrow or Thursday or whatever. Yeah. We uh, we shall see. I'll let Alrighty. you know. Adios. Right. Good night, man. Adios. Now that that loser's gone. Nah, I'm just kidding. Um, all right. Well, that's a wrap. We're uh, done for the day. If you watch this after the fact... Um, We'll be talking about episode six sometime this week, at least the first part of it. And um, I'm currently working on Avatar The Last Airbender shorts. If you have a scene or something from, from the first season that you want me to make a short about, let me know. If, uh, if you have something you want me to talk about from The Wheel of Time, let me know. And I probably should put something in my bio because I have a, a decent library of books that I'm familiar with that we could talk about. I also like a lot of TV shows and movies that we could talk about as well. I just uh, need some input from the people that like this kind of content. So, all right. Thanks a lot and uh, have a good night.